Now actually, insects are not the only pollinators. We have a couple of species of bats, actually eight here in the U.S. and there are many in other countries that are so important to be pollinators to certain plants. And here to tell us about these mysterious pollinators is Jenny Taylor, who's a U.S. Forest Service biologist. So Jenny, can you tell us a little bit about those pollinating bats? And as Tamberly mentioned, I'm a wildlife biologist. I work for the Forest Service in Idaho. And bats are some of the animals I study as part of my job. So I'm here to show some Y'all are great. Amazing animals over the years. Did you know that 20% of the mammals in the whole world are bats? That's over a thousand species of bats, and hundreds of those are pollinators. In the United States, we have eight pollinating species, and they're very small. Their bodies aren't much bigger than a mouse, but they have excellent vision and they can see well during the day or at night. Bats have a very important job to do at night. They're out pollinating flowers and spreading the seeds of the fruits that they eat. Their favorite flowers are usually pale colored, pretty large, and they're very fragrant. They have a lot of pollen in them and nectar. The pollen is very high in protein, which makes them very nutritious. And I bet you know some of the plants that bats pollinate. One of them we have right here with us in the garden. It's the papaya tree. The papaya is a tropical plant which is pollinated by bats. And it, did any of you ever make a model airplane when you were little? These airplanes are made out of balsa wood. It comes from a tropical tree called the ceiba, which grows in the rainforest in Central and South America. And this tree is also pollinated by bats. And the people who live in Central and South America have carved out these ceiba trees for centuries to make dugout canoes, which they still travel on the rivers in the rainforest to get to places where there are no cars. And bats are really, among the mammals, the champions of energy conservation. Bats can lower their breathing rate and their heart rate way down when they're resting, to the point where maybe their heart won't even beat more than once in a minute. They can also lower their temperature, like we can lower the thermostats at our house to save energy. So now, let us look at a short video produced by Bat Conservation International and learn how bats are essential in two ecosystems. In the deserts of the American Southwest, bats play a vital role in maintaining the fragile ecosystem. Many familiar desert plants are dependent on bats for their survival. During the day, hummingbirds and insects feed at the flowers of the agave or century plant. But these creatures play a negligible role in the pollination of this plant. The flowers only release pollen after nightfall. And it's now that nectar is secreted. It's this rich source of energy that attracts the bats. As each lesser long-nosed bat probes the flowers for food, Showers of pollen cover its face and body. The bats unwittingly pollinate hundreds of flowers in a single evening. Many cactus plants also depend on bats for pollination. Their flowers open after sundown, ready for their nocturnal visitors. When organ pipe cactus flowers open, small groups of bats move from one to the next, taking turns feeding. The familiar saguaro is also pollinated by bats. The saguaro blossoms don't open until midnight, so they don't compete with the other cacti. It's a remarkable example of the precision with which nature sometimes arranges things. The long-nosed bats have muzzles that are perfectly shaped to fit deep inside the cactus blossoms, like keys in a lock. One by one, the bats dip their heads into the blossoms, and one by one, the saguaro flowers are pollinated. The bats return to their roost, their faces covered with pollen. What hasn't rubbed off in other flowers is eagerly licked off by the bats. 
Without the bats, many of the desert's most important plants could die out. Around the world, in tropical rainforests, such as those in French Guiana, bats have a crucial role to play. Only recently has it become generally recognized that tropical rainforests are probably the most important ecosystems on Earth. Not only do they serve as the lungs of the planet, but these rich forests are the home of more than 90% of all the terrestrial plant and animal species. It's through the work of scientists like Dr. Scott Morey, a leading rainforest specialist, that we are only now discovering the immense importance of bats. Scott, you've been studying tropical rainforests for some 25 years now. How important are bats to regrowth of forest in a clearing like this? Merlin, bats are vital to the reestablishment of tropical rainforest after large-scale disturbance. Two and a half years ago, we came here, and the only plants in this field were plants whose seeds were brought in by bats. Later on, even today, we can see that the majority of the plants here are bat-dispersed plants. It's important to remember that the conditions for other kinds of plants to come in are first established by these bat-dispersed plants. It's only then that plants that are dispersed by birds, and later on, plants that are dispersed by other mammals, such as primates, can become established. We must remember that any conservation program in the tropics must give high priority to the conservation of bats. Because if we take bats out of this ecosystem, we cannot have normal regeneration of tropical rainforests. It has been estimated that just one Corolia bat can disperse up to 60,000 seeds in a single night. Throughout the world's tropical markets, about 70% of the commercial fruits come from plants that in the wild rely on bats for pollination or seed dispersal. The markets are full of them. They include guavas, peaches, avocados, bananas, mangoes, and plantain. The dawn bat is a key pollinator of the durium. As it feeds on the flower's nectar, the bat is in fact ensuring that the plant will bear fruit this season. In the wild, bananas also rely on bats. Although commercially grown bananas do not require pollination, wild stocks must be maintained in order to provide the fresh genetic strains needed to keep cultivated varieties healthy. Okay, from the video we've learned how important it is for bats in many different ecosystems and how their survival depends on the bats. Deja, what's one of your favorite fruits? My favorite is the mango. Very good choice. That's one of the fruits that's pollinated by bats. And Deja, what's that orange thing you're, read you're wearing? Well, this is a life preserver. Well, this is a life preserver. And that's what you wear when you go into a boat to make sure you don't go overboard and drown. So the life preserver will help float. Why is it that it floats? There's a certain product in here that helps the life preserver keep you up if you go into the water. What's uh, that called? It's called Kapok. Kapok, yes. That comes from the Saba tree, the same tree in South America where they made the dugout canoes. Very good. And Reggie, what's one of your favorite ice cream flavors? I just love vanilla ice cream. Can't go wrong with vanilla. And the bats pollinate the vanilla, cape, the vanilla um, orchid also. So there are many, many fruits that we treasure that bats are important for their survival. Guacamole, when you're having some guacamole or vanilla ice cream or putting some allspice on your pumpkin pie that you're baking for Thanksgiving, stop a minute and think about the animals that made it all possible. And thank a bat. Yay!